aspects of representation and the representation of politics and, and what those actually mean. And for me, you know, uh, largely living as a South African in, in South Africa, you really have to create within that milieu, within that context. And uh, if you need to be, if you want to be taken seriously, if you really want to be a respected artist, one has to look through a lens of another, another prison and, and, and bring to light the problems that one is surrounded by. Sometimes as an artist you sort of feel it's a, it's a yoke you have to bear if you want to be taken seriously. But then you have to consider if you are a video maker or in this case a dance video artist, what kind of dance film are you going to make? Are you going to make a dance film, uh, for instance, like the Nora? That's why I kind of put it in there. Dance film category. That kind of softens the problem. Okay. It's very poetic. It's very romantic. And I find it a very romanticized point of view. And walking in plastic kind of has got very low production value. That's why I put it on there. And yet, for me, that film is incredibly powerful. The other category I would call um, dance video, which highlights dance, more uh, particularly just dance per se. Uh, or else you could get video dance, which is about the thinking of the dancer, or the way that you shoot it. So it's about production. It's about is it handheld? Is it formal shooting? Is it improvised? Is it how 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 are your how are your politics? How is your what is your how is your discourse loaded in the way that you've made it from? So that it's, it's how you shoot it, how you edit it, and uh, what it is that you want to say, and what politically are you? What is your standpoint? Because you're obviously you're making something any cultural art artifact. You're bringing the whole you bring a whole lot of discourse. You bring a whole lot of dialogue together with it. Well, I think there's space for all these different kinds of, of dance films, some being very aesthetic and uh, for the production value or whatever, and some also with a more political agenda, or, I mean, the, the different uh, angles that the director and the choreographer wants to, to convey, I guess. Uh, it is a very pretty picture, the Nora thing, I agree, yeah. But it's like, mm, you can, it's like uh, candy floss. Mm. Well, I think why not? Uh, I think it's great to picture somehow. I thought it was, just, I thought it was really nice because it was a personal story. Um, and then that way maybe also put it in the because it's just, Though it comes from a personal perspective, I sort of think it can be quite broad in a sense. But making Nora a good film because they're making the film, they're telling a the story, mm -hmm. uh, production value or not, of course it happens, but they're telling a the story that's a film film. That's, that's why you can take it. And the own film, Kohano, uh, I mean, you demonstrated yourself. In the end, you start to tell a story. Mm -hmm. Then the boys like the funny thing, and immediately it changed to be more interesting because they're telling the story. I know. So what is that? So what is it? The power. You see, the thing is that what I'm trying to to discover, and I think all of us as screen dance makers, not as film traditional filmmakers that we tell narrative, is to try and find a way of this accretion of cinema and art and dance, because that's what it is. Screen dance is an accretion of those things. If you're trying to, through, the, through this body of technology, to throw that up on the screen, and how can we use this body of technology to amplify the, the kinesthetic value of the body and to amplify the emotional impact of the body, rather than tell stories to the rational side of ourselves. And I think that's where, we, that's where screen dance makers, all of us at the moment, are trying to, to, to challenge the notion of these normal overarching arc, uh, arcs of narrative, where we want to buy into it, it's, it's easily consumed. So how, how do we challenge that status quo? I mean, I think it's a very, and that's where the political game starts to, that's where it starts to really be interesting for me. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a filmmaker, I'm yes, a hardcore no, no. filmmaker, uh, and if you don't accept what film is, you're telling story by pictures, forget about it. I'm, I'm sorry, I have to beg, I have to beg a, a complete difference because I think that uh, film lends itself extremely well to dance and to movement. That's primarily what it is. It's about moving pictures. You know, there's all those frames uh, that, that only because of movement that, that we actually read them. And what we would like to do as screen dance makers is to actually challenge that 
notion of getting linear narrative in because we all understand linear narrative and we want to actually amplify something completely completely other. We want, in fact, we want to dig into the other. That's, ex that's precisely where we want to be. I, mean, I don't care about form. You can use any form. Care, you can use I anything. Do. But tell me a story. If you don't do that, forget about it. Oh, that's, I, I, I guess it all comes down to put something interesting in front of the camera. Be it a story or be it a, a movement that you can relate to. I mean, as long as you can have some kind of identification with what's going on yes. on the screen. Be it a story, be it a phrase, be it a person, an interesting uh, uh, face, whatever. Yeah. Then you can connect to it and, and have a, I guess, a deeper experience. Um, but I agree. I mean, you don't have to have the narrative, but it's like it's a, it's a good trick in the book to, to, to have that connection. And then you can put dance on top of that narrative to kind of ease it more, um, make it more easy for the for the audience to. I mean, Larry Marx talks about haptic images, which is about getting you emotionally and kinesthetically involved with those images that are perhaps uncliched, that you don't really understand. So you fill in, you fill in all the gaps of your imagination. So it's actually working, working. It's making you work at what you at what you actually work at, watching. What you're trying to do is to stimulate your mirror neurons, and in fact, that you have a, a, an empathetic response to to what it is that you see, rather than going through some sort of linear discourse and rational. I haven't said anything about linear thing, but tell me a story, and I mean, you can do it in many, many ways, and I could show you interesting, very abstract ways of telling stories, but if you not accept that, that what film is, it is telling stories by pictures. Yes, but there's different ways of telling those stories. Okay. It's not really interesting in the first part, but as soon as boys start to telling a story, but you're, so used, because you're so used to watching dance film and, linear, and, and linearity. We are so, we are so to do used linearity. to that. Our brains are conditioned to actually do that, to constantly make sense. And as soon as we get uh, uncliched uh, images put in front of us, our, you know, there's, there's a lot of information we have to sort out before we can actually comprehend or, or maybe make sense of it. And, that, and, that's, where the, that's, where the po and that's where the political work really starts to take shape. Because it's questioning. It's questioning you and your, and your understanding of the world, and I think that there is definitely <coughs> far more research that we can do in order to, to get there. But I think in the Nora field, the linearity comes from the words. I think that if there Thank was you. no words, I'm I think that there would be a, a very different reaction. Mm -hmm. I think that the imagery is actually very, very abstract in some ways. It brings you into different worlds. I think it's, it's the text that, that maybe gives us some sort of eases us along, I don't know, for someone that might not be as used to it. But I think that as a film, the film, the, the images are, play a lot with your imagination. Yeah, I've, been, I've been experiencing another way of, of being by the screen uh, than I had when I was in dancing stage for a long time. So suddenly I was reacting to lights and, and the structures and the rooms in a completely different way. And there was a different influence than from being watching dance on stage. Be very related to uh, movements who has a simple, uh, direct uh, relation to uh, something with a storyteller or mm -hmm. African theater or like that. But I mean, I see a lot of things also coming which I didn't know. <laughs> I think the screen is still uh, worth taking back <laughs> to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And the dance is certainly a place where you can be silent. There's something going on in your mind, so you don't know. The choreographers are starting to use video and projections in a more, in a new way. So it's uh, it's not just this screen. It may be on the floor. It may be just on one an arm or whatever. So the 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 concept of what the screen is is also kind of bending. Hmm. And I guess maybe this is also an example of that people try to bend the. Uh, the traditional way of thinking what a screen is and what a dancing and what a film is.